You guys talk like grown-ups. Oh, well, this is a really good school. We'll see you at school tomorrow. School. <laughs> Don't be so stupid. You're going to go to the state school where you belong. Be happy. She doesn't even go here. Do you even go to this school? If you've been a longtime follower of my channel, you know that I usually compare the United States and Europe, oftentimes talking about society, culture, economics, and living here in Germany because that's where I happen to live and am currently raising my family. And so as someone with kids, particularly young kids, about to enter into the school system, in today's video, I wanna talk about something that our two nations actually share in common with one another, and that's the divide between public and private school education. In both the US and Germany, around nine to 10% of all primary school students attend a private school in lieu of public education. And in both the US and Germany, those numbers have risen in recent years. But the funding for private schools and the tuition charged by private schools is a significant difference from the United States to Germany, leading to real questions about why someone might choose to seek out private education in the first place, and whether or not private education really provides better education. Or, as some politicians and community leaders decry, is a system for exacerbating socioeconomic division. So. Let's take a look. Today's video is made possible by our supporters on Patreon. If you'd like to gain early access to videos before they're uploaded to YouTube, as well as participate in exclusive Q&A sessions with me, please consider supporting my channel at patreon.com forward slash type Ashton. All right, so let's go ahead and jump right into the numbers, starting with the United States. With more than 13,000 public school districts, made up of about 100,000 schools, and more than 30,000 individual private schools in the United States, parents have plenty of choices. However, certain locales may have limited or no private school options and some may have private schools for certain grades and not others. However, according to the most recent data, public school attendance far outweighs private schools. But interestingly, those numbers are starting to change. In 2019, the year before the world halted to a stop, in the US, there were 50.8 million students attending public school and 4.7 million students in private schools. And that number was actually on the decline. But that trajectory downward in private schools had actually been happening for some time. Between 1964 and 2019, the percentage of all students attending private schools fell from 14% to 9% of all school-aged children, an all-time low. And interestingly, this is a statistic that we see happening worldwide across 30-odd members of the OECD, a club of mostly wealthy countries, the share of children in schools that get less than half their funding from the government fell from about 8% in 2000 to some 5% in 2018. However, recent global events have changed a lot, specifically in the United States. Unfortunately, when it comes to private schools, we actually don't have officially updated statistics yet on this, but for public schools, we do know that attendance has been on the decline in the last couple of years. Enrollment dropped by about 3% from 50.8 million students in the fall of 2019 to 49.4 million students in the fall of 2020 and the fall of 2021. And total enrollment is projected to continue decreasing to an estimated 46.9 million by the fall of 2031. And where all of those kids are going is actually not all that clear cut. You see, unlike in Germany, which I'll get to in a minute, uh, the United States has a lot more varied options, such as homeschooling, for example, which by the way, is completely outlawed in Germany, except for extremely rare and exceptional cases. And I don't have time to go into it today, but if you want to learn more, I'll go ahead and link that video up here in the corner. However, if we do look at brick and mortar private schools, you're gonna see considerable variability from one state to another. Hawaii is the state with the highest percentage of K through 12 students enrolled in private schools at 19%, whereas Wyoming is the lowest at 3%. 
However, generally speaking, we can see that California and the Northeast have some of the highest enrollment rates in private schools. And I would argue that a lot of this has to do with the fact that private schools tend to be more popular in dense urban areas, so cities and suburbs. Interestingly though, in the United States, most private school students, about 78%, attend religiously affiliated schools. The large chunk attending private Catholic schools, which is a stark contrast to Germany, where the largest network of private schools is actually the Waldorf schools. And speaking of Germany, I actually think that's a pretty good transition to us talking about their numbers more in depth. Nearly 8.7 million kids were enrolled in the 2022-23 school year in Germany, of which about 797,600 students, or 9.2%, went to private schools. And the number of primary school students opting for private education is on the rise. Just two decades earlier, only 6% of students attended private schools in Germany. And this shift from public education to private education is also reflected in the total number of schools as well. As data from Destata shows, from the 2002-2003 school year to the 2022-2023 school year, the number of private general education schools increased by 50% climbing from just over 2,500 to over 3,700. And in contrast, public general education schools saw a significant decline of 24%. And this shift led to the closure or merger of almost 2,100 public primary schools. And when I was researching for this topic, I actually thought it was really interesting because when you start to peel back the layers of why private schools are on the rise in Germany, it's incredibly regional. In fact, the vast majority of new private schools are being opened in the former East Germany, where interestingly, before the fall of the Berlin Wall, private schools were practically non-existent there. According to a study published by the Friedrich Ebert Stiftung, the widespread closure of schools after the collapse of the German Democratic Republic, coupled with a shortage of staff, resources, and rooms, has basically made it impossible for schools and teachers in many areas to compensate. This is especially so in Eastern Germany, where numerous private agencies, especially religious agencies, are jumping into the primary school education sector in the absence of sufficient state provisions. So yeah, it's probably unsurprising then that the largest proportion of private schools is in Mecklenburg, Western Pomerania, where 12.3% of children and young people chose private education in the 2022-2023 school year. And similarly, relatively high percentages were also observed in Saxony with 11.2%. And that's actually in contrast to Schleswig-Holstein that had the lowest percentage with around 5.6% of students attending private schools. Uh, unsurprisingly, a former West German state. Now, while the proportion of students that are enrolled in public school versus private school education are actually remarkably similar between the United States and Germany, what does lie in stark contrast is the cost of attendance for those private schools and how those private schools are actually funded. So just for reference, most public schools are funded with federal, state, and local tax dollars in the U.S. And in contrast, the majority of private schools in the U.S. are funded through tuition endowments and fundraisers, not tax dollars. So for a lot of kids, that usually tends to mean that your parents pay for public school out of pocket. And your tuition is a heck of a lot like attending a university would be. The average yearly tuition at any one of the over 22,000 private K-12 schools in the United States is $12,350 a year in 2021. This includes the average tuition at private high schools of $16,040. Yeah, it's crazy expensive. But you know, a lot of this again comes from the fact that private schools in the US primarily operate without any public funds, which is definitely not how things work with private schools here in Germany. Here, private schools have two main sources of funds, state subsidies and parents. The basic law, which is Germany's constitution, says that private schools may not be a means to segregate children from wealthier or poorer households. And that means that by law, they have to be affordable. And they also may not turn a profit. 
Now, it's actually up to the individual states to decide whether or not they want to even impose tuition fees at all on private schools. And in fact, in one of the more populous states, North Rhine-Westphalia, there's actually no tuition for private schools because the state government actually funds them quite generously. But I actually looked into four local private schools in my area, but frustratingly, none of them actually advertise publicly on their website what the parent subsidy or the tuition actually is. Um, so I did a lot of digging and I found one school that operates as both a boarding school, but also just a traditional Freie Schule where the kids still eat and sleep and live at home and then just attend it during the day. Um, that is here in Baden-Württemberg that did publish their tuition. And I actually have those prices listed up here on the screen. Now, if you're watching this video from Germany, please let me know down in the comment section section below if these costs seem reasonable to you. And also, please keep in mind that if you are watching this video because you happen to be an immigrant or expat family who is interested in placing your child in an independent school, just beware, these are actually completely different than private schools like Waldorf or Montessori or Freie Schule in Germany. In fact, oftentimes international schools don't actually receive any state subsidies, so you could potentially plan to see tuition costs that are pretty on par with what private school costs in the United States. But beyond tuition fees and subsidies, many private schools rely on associations of supporters, often run by parents to help cover the costs for materials, field trips, and other projects. But I would say this isn't necessarily a private school only phenomenon. Um, we're actually introducing our son into kindergarten next month. And one of the things that we can do as a family is join a fair ein or a foundation where basically we give a monthly contribution and it'll help to fund things like a new coffee machine for the teachers or um, extra funds for field trips and things like that. And that donation, while tax deductible, of course, is in addition to the school fees that we pay at his kindergarten, which are also tax deductible. Now, I've shared this before, uh, I'm a mom. And so, probably not surprising, a lot of my friends, both in the US and Germany, are parents too. So um, it's actually been really fascinating for me to listen to my friends who are parents talk about the decision on whether or not to put their kid in public or private education and what their rationale is for wanting to do it. Because in my experience, it's actually been a little bit different. A recent survey found that the top five reasons why parents choose a private school for their children in the U.S. are really all related to school climate and classroom management, including better student discipline, better learning environments, smaller class sizes, and improved student safety, and more individual attention for my child. And for sure, a lot of those same things also play into that conversation with parents here in Germany as well. In Bavaria, the local teachers association states that the desire to shield their children from particularly performance-oriented systems of public schools are one of the major reasons why parents opt for private schools. In Hesse, the Ministry of Education and Cultural Affairs states that parents are particularly interested in the small class sizes and extensive supervision that private schools in their state offer. And in my state of Baden-Württemberg, Perhaps, again, unsurprisingly, um, parents are also really interested in sending their children to a church or religiously run school. But I will say, in my experience and talking to my friends, um, it's been really interesting for me because I found that amongst my American friends who are parents, there's been a phrase that I've heard tossed around a couple of times that they are choosing to place their child in a private school because it's the only way that they can give their child a decent education. And I think when you peel back the layers of what they mean by decent education, I think there's a lot more going on than just academic performance. American education, specifically the subjects they teach around sexuality, gender, and identity, has been the latest unfortunate battlefront on the culture wars. And so when you consider that most American private schools are religiously affiliated and have the ability to make their own curriculum outside of federal regulation, private schools seem to be the morally righteous choice. 
which really has not been the overwhelming sentiment that I have felt amongst my friends here in Germany. And bear in mind, I live in a pretty conservative part of Germany, relatively speaking. But to be fair, I'm not at all saying that that doesn't mean that German families don't still think that improvements could be made with their public school system. Germany is currently facing a debilitating teacher shortage, and a staggering 85% of people are dissatisfied with schools and educational policy in Germany, according to a recent representative survey. But I've actually found in quite a lot of cases that I've heard, even amongst some family members, that they've chosen to pull their child out of public school because of, like, woke ideology, whatever that means. Um, and place their child in private schools, which is just very, very different than what I've experienced here. And I think that also shows in these studies. 73% of German respondents in that same survey I just quoted said that education policy in Germany should actually be more centralized in order to overcome their shortcomings. In other words, Germans feel that the solution is in strength in strong, congruent educational standards, building back up the public school system, not tearing it down altogether. But in truth, if we're going to kind of continue this discussion on what it means to have a decent education, then I think we should talk about educational outcomes because when you look at those educational outcomes between public and private schools, there is a difference at least in the United States. Research has consistently shown that private school students tend to perform better on standardized testing. The National Assessment of Educational Progress, which is often referred to the nation's report card, assesses both public and private school students in subjects such as math, reading, science, and writing. The most recent NAEP data shows what other research has found. Private school students score better in almost all subjects. For example, eighth grade private school students averaged about 20 points higher than public school or charter students on their reading tests in 2022. But while private schools appear to provide better educational outcomes on paper, many researchers have also tried to dig deeper behind those statistics and really understand, is it the school or is it other circumstances that actually lead to better educational attainment? One researcher who led a study published in 2018 that examined academic, social, and psychological and attainment outcomes found that student success is actually more directly related to family attributes, such as having college-educated parents and higher incomes. And it's important to remember, private school tuition programs vary widely in the degree of transparency and accountability they require of private schools. Private schools are under no obligation to participate in voucher programs, which help to make tuition more affordable, and some really don't participate in them because they have a desire to avoid public regulation. And importantly, schools that do participate may still admit students selectively, and that selectiveness can also skew academic data on student performance. For example, private schools in the US are only responsible for providing modifications, accommodations, and access to educational opportunities, such as a ramp for a child in a wheelchair, but they are not required by law to give special education courses, such as those aimed to help children with learning disabilities. So it's quite likely that if your child is suffering from a learning disability, even if you wanted to put them in private school, you might not simply because that school doesn't have the tools your child needs to be successful in an academic environment. And really, that is so vastly different than what happens here in Germany, where our constitution, again, the basic law, guarantees the right to establish private schools as alternative to public schools, but they are subject to the individual German states, as are all matters of education, and must, by law, meet the same standards as public schools. Furthermore, teachers at private schools are required to have completed the same training as those in public schools. And because curriculum is regulated, pupils at alternative schools in Germany perform similarly to public school students in comparative tests, such as the PISA. However, just because 
private schools perform on par with public schools in Germany doesn't mean that they are exempt from their own lion's share of controversy. This study is admittedly a bit old, but researchers did find that children of parents with a university entry degree, an abitur, are more likely to attend private school than those with less educated parents. And those numbers are rising. They found that between 1997 and 2007, the percentage of students with better educated parents attending private school increased by 77%. By contrast, the corresponding increase for students with less educated parents was only 12%. And according to a statement by Germany's Education and Science Workers Union, private schools are socially selective and contribute to a societal divide. Now granted, I don't personally feel that the social divide is quite as deep here in Germany as it is in the United States. Again, schools in the U.S. are highly funded by localized tax dollars, which means you're going to see incredible differences in educational institutions from one zip code to another. Here in Germany, things tend to be a heck of a lot more even-handed. But that doesn't still necessarily mean that Germany doesn't struggle with things like wealth, class, and income segregation. Private schools as a concept put some of our core democratic and ethical principles in tension with each other. People worry, often very thoughtfully, about whether they're perpetuating inequality if they choose to send their kids to a good, quote-unquote, private school, instead of the local, quote-unquote, bad public school. But the sad reality is, they're doing so by draining the public school of resources. Even if it's not funding, it's still time and participation. In the United States, it is becoming increasingly common for states to now offer vouchers to students who attend private schools, effectively allowing these students to take the tax dollars that would have gone to a public school and give it back and let them apply that to a private school. On top of that, every child who leaves public school for private school chips away at public education's legitimacy as an important and necessary institution and gives conservative lawmakers more ammunition to take money out of the public school system. And let's not forget, the networks that kids form in school, the people that they're surrounded with, whether peers or adults, and the relative affluence or poverty around them largely determine life outcomes. And so honestly, after doing all this research, I personally felt very conflicted about all of this. You know, as a parent, I want to be able to make sure that my child is in a learning environment that best suits their learning style. No two kids are the same. And if that means a Montessori school or a Waldorf school, um, I don't personally know enough about them yet to really make that decision one way or the other. I just wanna make sure that my kid gets the best opportunity at education that they can. But at the same time, I also feel so very conflicted because I personally subscribe to an ideology that says that we need to do everything we can to continue building up community resources. And yeah, community resources means that they should be a resource for everyone in the community and not a resource that you can just opt out of if you're wealthy enough. So yeah, I, I personally felt pretty conflicted about all of this, um, but I would love to hear from you down in the comment section. I think this is a conversation that so many families are having right now. And to be fair, I don't think there's a right answer or a wrong answer, and I don't want to ask this question in judgment. I ask this question from very much a place of wanting to understand on what are some of the motivations that other families feel um, pushes them one way or the other, public or private. And yeah, what was the big decision for you that made you choose? Please let me know down in the comment section below. And as always, guys, if you enjoyed what you saw today, be sure to hit that thumbs up button. And for more content from Type Ashton, hit that subscribe button. So I'll see you next Sunday. Tschüss.